Hello, this is Exemita playing Interstellar Rift. Today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial for starting out in the game. I've noticed a lot of new players have been confused when they first started, so I'm hoping to remedy that. I'm going to be starting in solo game. If you're new to this game, I would not recommend going to a multiplayer server just yet. And if you do, please go to a PvE server so you can get used to the game. First, we're going to start in Hurl's Co. I recommend this faction because you start out on a station that has an extractor and a refinery. It is also surrounded by ice, iron, copper, and carbon. So when you first join the uh, game, you'll start out with 75 or 750,000 units to spend, as well as one CS1 repair tool, 20,000 hydrogen, 1,000 oxygen, two repair tool ammos, 1,200 standard laser, laser cells, and 600 standard nanobots. This is the uh, vault on the station. It can be reached from any station that has a vault in any sector. So you're probably wondering, when you first enter this game, where do you get your ship? Well, when you're first starting, I recommend going here to the Vendatron. And there's a menu on the left. It has two ships for sale. One of them is going to cost you most of your units, but I recommend purchasing it when you first start. It doesn't start with any shields, but uh, that's not what we're worried about. We want the resources from the ship. So after you've bought it, if you go over to these double door here, or this long door, you'll see a ship constructor. You can salvage the ship here, but uh, before we do that, we're going to want to, instead of salvaging it, we're going to collect some resources first so we can add a shield generator to the ship. Let's see what we need to make the shield generator. Let's go to modify ship, click on the ship we own. Only the ships you own will be listed here. Modify. Alright, so this is the ship editor. You'll be see you'll be able to see its stats, what it costs, and all that. So as you can see, we have no shields. If you click on prop edit mode, it'll show the interior of your ship. If you click page down and page up, it'll move between levels of the ship. Anyways, so we want a shield generator. That would be in weapons because it's a combat based item. So we're going to want a small shield generator. It isn't too expensive, it's only 250 iron and 150 copper. So now we're just going to exit the ship menu. And we're going to head here to Mining Bay 01. There's also one on the other side called Mining Bay 02. In multiplayer servers, they have two of these, that way people can share. But there's also two refineries and three extractors in here. So we're going to go up to this extractor, we're going to look at what's available. Let's see, we've got iron, copper, and carbon right at the beginning. So if you double click on it, it'll start uh, mining it. Another cool thing you can do while you're standing at this uh, menu is if you double click something else it'll highlight it blue and that'll be what it'll grab next. If you leave the room it will cancel that. Alright so now we have the iron and the copper we need we just need to get it refined now. So if you head to one of these extractors, you'll want to go to this opening on the left, click E, 
So you can hold a maximum of eight uh, crates in there. So if you click on this and then click process, it'll start processing it. And it'll come out of here when it's done. We only need a little bit, so I'm just going to leave the rest there since I'm just doing solo game. You put it in your vault. Anything that is inside your uh, station vault will be used when modifying your ship. If it's in your inventory, uh, I think it might be used. I always put it in the vault. So let's modify. So let's put the shields somewhere where there's space that won't obstruct our movement. We've already got a couple displays, so if you right click on the display, you can remove it. And then, if you click on this uh, toggle mouse rotation, and then click and hold, you can rotate the item that you're use that you're placing. Just uh, click down and then move the mouse and it'll start rotating it in place. So you want the blue screen to be on the outside so you can access the shield generator to see its information. Alright, now that we've done this, click confirm your modifications. After that, it'll say it'll take 9 seconds to finish the upgrade as it waits for anyone who's on the ship to leave. It'll repeat that until people leave the ship. Now that we have a shield generator, we can get on this ship, but before we do that, we want to grab our hydrogen and our oxygen in the vault. We want to grab 10,000 hydrogen, 1,000 oxygen. I'd recommend grabbing one of these repair gun ammos as well as the repair gun, your nanobots, your laser ammunition, and now we can get started on getting in the ship. So you may have noticed that I switched between uh, resource and uh, equipment. To do, to do that, you click the Q button. It'll switch between these two menus. All right, now we're on the ship. We head down to fuel storage. The reason I said 10,000 hydrogen is because a small hydrogen tank can only hold 10,000. Next, we're gonna put 1,000 oxygen into our oxygen generator. Over time, the oxygen generator will create carbon as it filters out the oxygen that we breathe. You can pull the carbon out later when it hits any level, really, and it'll give you free carbon to use when you want to make steel and whatnot. If you were to die, there's a molecular assembler here. It basically lets you respawn on your ship. Now we're going to head to the bridge. So the bridge has one armor generator, it's a small one, and an ammo or an ammunition loader. Go ahead and throw those in there. You want to put your nanobots in the armor generator and your laser cells in your ammunition loader. And now we're going to head to the cockpit. So we have 4,000 shields right now and it's charging up as we speak. And 9.45 thousand fuel left. Alright, so when you have the uh, little menu open right here, if you click this upper thing that looks like a house, it'll... Okay, never mind, we're going to be clicking one of these. So, hydrogen, 
or you can set it to your engine's power. Anyways, the first thing I'd recommend if you have some sensors, let me see if the ship starts with some. It does, it has two small ones on it. Go to signatures, toggle scanners. So let's see, our range is, if you click on this little uh, blip icon, it'll show, click on one of these things, just any of them, copper. We have a scanner strength of 200, so that's not very far, but later on in the game, when you have stronger scanners, it'll let you know when enemies are closer to you from far away. So to start flying, the basics is WASD, W increases your thrust, your thrust is right here, S slows you down, you can also reverse, A and D strafe left and right, Q and E let you rotate the ship left and right. R and F let you strafe up and down. Tab lets you switch between turning mode and mouse mode. Right clicking lets you move your screen around while in the seat. And uh, Z lets you go into third person mode while flying. H lets you turn your weapons on. When your weapons are on, you want to click tab and use turning mode. And when an enemy is close by, which I will show you later, actually I'm going to hold it off for now right here and wait till we get to a combat situation to show you that. So right now, I'm going to go look for another station. So if I want to find another station, just click on station list, look for any of these names. The industrial complex is where we started. The Voltron is a place where it always has a vault on it. One of those things I mentioned previously where it's available anywhere in any sector. The rest of these are all satellites, we'll get on that later. The Rift Hub. I'll talk about that later too. Instead, let's go find an asteroid field. So these um, triangles with holes in them, these are asteroid fields. You'll see them all over the radius on your screen. This one is actually fairly close. Let's go to the one that's further away so I can show you warp mechanics. So we're going to start aiming towards this. And then to start jumping, you click J. Alright, so now we're warping at level 1 warp. To increase it, just click W once, and then again. And again, this speeds up how fast you're moving in warp. To slow down, we'll be clicking the back button, or S. S, clicking S, and it slows you down, so 
So now we're in this asteroid field that we just warped from. Let's see how far away we are from the industrial complex. We're now 11.62 AU away from the industrial complex where we started. The thing is, if you run out of fuel and energy, you can't warp or fly. And you don't want that. But, uh, so now we're in the asteroid field, let's see what's available. If you head down to your mining bay, go to the extractor, you'll see that there's ice and, uh, well, water and iron near us. The asteroids are always moving, so sometimes they get out of range. That's okay. It happens. But yeah, what I did was I uh, double clicked on it to make it start mining that ice. And it'll come out of this output here and get placed on this pallet right here. This ship doesn't come with a refinery, so you can't really refine anything on it. But it does come with a lot of pallets that you can place things on. So you click E to grab it off the pallet. And you also click E to place it on the other pallet. The E key is used a lot in this game. You can also use it to give other, pl other players items. So, you may be wondering, how do I find the ores that I'm looking for? Like, say you're looking for, let's see, copper, we'll go with that, yeah. So, you see how this is uh, up like this? So, let's see, the closer you get to a resource, the higher it will reach up to the top. It'll start peaking out and increasing in size. When it's green, that means you're close to the uh, resource you're looking for. Anyways, another thing that I'd recommend if you have it available is if you have a crew. You can use someone in your crew to look at the uh, sensors and see the asteroid field. And they can inform you, hey, there's copper near us within range of the scanners, which is 200 on this ship, 200 meters. And then the person in the ship can click X, which is full stop, to slow himself down, because the copper is close by. And then you can start searching for this copper. If it turns green, that means you're facing the right direction as well. Or that it's close. Yeah, it's close. And then if we run down to the extractor... And look! Oh! It was there for a second. And it got out of range. So the sensor here. Well, if I had managed to get to the extractor fast enough before the asteroid drifted out of reach, we would have been able to grab it with the extractor. A lot of people in this game don't usually have crews. There are some groups that do. I do recommend having one. They are nice to have, though they aren't needed. At least not in the beginning, when you have a small ship. So we're going to head back to the industrial complex. And see if we can pick up some missions. You're probably wondering, how do we make credits? Or units, I should say. Well, missions are a good way to do that. They also increase your reputation with the starting faction you joined.
So if you're about as tired as I am of constantly having your warp dropped without your permission, you can go to engine status and click off on auto warp drop. This is here to protect your ship from, you know, flying into a planet and whatnot. But if you turn it off, then you'll war you'll continue warping even if you're next to a planet or colliding with one. I managed to stop within 388 meters of the industrial complex. So there are challenges in multiplayer to see who can stop closest to a ship or, and stuff. Anyways, let's go to the station. We're going to head to our small teleporter pad. Which is not there, but in here in teleporter. HSC industrial complex. All right, so you see this big board up here? Usually there are mission consoles underneath them. You can do things like delivering cargo, hunting Skrill, uh, refining resources for the faction. Uh, the search and destroy ones can be difficult if you're not used to the game. But I'm going to show you how to use the weapons, so we're going to grab this one. Alright, so now we're going to get back in our ship. Now, I don't recommend picking up one of these missions in a starter ship. These ships aren't exactly meant for combat but to explain how weapons work I don't mind doing that so you're gonna see this gold icon right here that is the location of your mission if you go to the station list sometimes it'll show it on there if it's located at a station if it's not that means it's in the middle of space We're going to click T on it to target it on the screen. And we should probably turn our weapons on before we get there, so clicking H will turn your weapons on. Okay, it was next to a moon, or a gas giant. Not sure why it wasn't listed. So what you just saw me do was I clicked T on one of these grunts to target them. So a tactic I'd recommend when you're in combat with a ship that's pretty easy to destroy or you're not very good at aiming while flying towards them is to instead of flying towards them and shooting, back up and shoot at them. First we're going to aggro them by getting within, I believe, two kilometers, maybe four. They should turn red when they become aggro. They usually start out red. So now we're close. 
Within two kilometers, the yellow circle should appear. Okay, I'm not sure why it's not showing up. Anyways, so we're going to start backing up. So, uh, if you click your left mouse button, you'll start firing the weapon directly at where you're aiming. Ordinarily, for whatever reason, uh, you're supposed to see a yellow circle, which is an indicator where to shoot when they're moving. For some odd reason, the game is not showing me that right now. You should expect bugs. This game does have its bugs. So you might see that my hand keeps coming out holding this oxygen. That's another issue. Just a click escape to get out of the seat, it should stop, and then get back in the seat and you'll be good. So the thing about shields is, if your shield drops, you start taking armor damage. And as long as you have armor, your ship will function. Though your devices are not protected while your armor, I mean your shields are down. This means that your devices inside your ship can take damage and be disabled. And when that happens, we have... When it happens, we have the repair gun. And I can show you that here real quick. Let me just disable the shields. So now the shields are dropping. It'll take a minute, but once I start taking damage and some of the devices get damaged, I'll show you what to do. Pretty sure I saw the blue rectangle for a second there. I'm not sure why it wasn't showing it. So you see that blue cir uh, not blue, sorry, yellow circle that keeps showing up. That's where you want to aim when you're firing your gun. The gimbal lasers have slight auto-targeting to them, so as long as you're aiming close to that circle, you'll hit them. Oh, we got two of them, don't we? Or do we? Nope, just one. Okay. Shields are almost down. why it's taking so long. Alright, so when it starts making that noise, it means your armor is being hit.
as you continuously get shot, Oh, by the way, you're going to want to take out your weapon, click R to reload the weapon, or the repair gun, and it'll show you what's been damaged on the ship. So let's go ahead and take this girl out. All right. So now we're going to go check to see what's been damaged. If you head down to one of these orange icons, you'll be able to see what's been damaged. So this door has been damaged 1%. If you just click on it, it'll start repairing it. It wasn't too badly damaged, which I was expecting more damage than that. Every once in a while you'll see these, uh, like, alien things on the door. They look like, you know, vines or... They got teeth on them. They'll be blocking the door off. Just aim at it and click your right mouse button, and it'll start deconstructing it. You can also use this to damage your devices as well. All right. I think that'll be it for this tutorial today. Tomorrow I will show you how to collect or how to use the rift drive as well as how to determine where resources are in a sector that you're planning on going to. And I guess that's it. I'll see you later. This was X.